For the first time in my life, I don't know what I want. Money and luxury items are no longer exciting to me. I feel like I forgot how to love. I feel like I lost control, but I can't muster up enough fucks to do anything about it. I wrote that three months ago. For five years, my life has been guided by one simple principle. If I can attain money, I can buy freedom, and then I can find happiness. So as a financially free person, why was I only feeling more lost, more resentment, and more hate? That question led me on a journey to find true happiness. And while I did not find it, what I uncovered along the way truly changed my life. What do you want? That's the first question I asked myself. What do you want, man? What do you want? So I wrote down my goals, right? I wrote down my goals. I want to make $100 million. I want to own 500 properties. I want a million subscribers on YouTube. And I was just writing them down. The typical thing that used to happen to me wasn't happening anymore. Usually, when I wrote down my goals, I would get excited. But I wasn't feeling that. I was not feeling that fire because deep down I knew that if I had these things, boom, I have $100 million in my bank account today, I wouldn't be any happier. You know, maybe I'd be excited, a momentary stint of joy, but I wouldn't really feel happiness because it would just be another achievement. It would just be another trophy. So I was lost with this. This is like, again, the first time ever that I didn't really have a goal and I, I didn't have a vision anymore. So I sat with this for a couple of days and then a couple of weeks and then I heard a story about a boy and a master archer. Now this boy goes to this master and he says, I want you to teach me how to be an archer, right? I wanna be the greatest archer that ever lived. I want them to tell stories about me. So the master says, okay, sure. So he gets a twig, he ties a rope to it, gets another twig and here's your bow, here's your arrow. And he puts a target on a tree or a little rock on a tree or something. And he says, hit that. So the boy gets a little twig and his little stick and he boom, and he misses, right? Do it again, misses. So he does that for all day. The master comes back to him later and he's been doing that an entire day. Then, you know, the sun's starting to set and he hasn't hit the thing yet. And the master asks him, what's your goal, right? What's your goal? And the boy says, well, I wanna hit, hit the rock. I wanna hit the rock on the tree. And the master says, that's stupid. Your goal shouldn't be to hit a rock. Your goal should be to become good enough so that you can hit the rock, right? The rock is your target. The goal is becoming the person that can actually hit the target. So when I heard that, I was thinking, I don't want to have a hundred million dollars. I want to become the person that can provide enough value in the world to earn a hundred million dollars. I don't want to have a million subscribers. I want to be the person that can share enough value out there that a million people would want to watch. And think like a monk, Jay Shetty talks about not chasing what you want, but who do you want to be? Now, when I read that, that changed my perspective on everything. My whole life I've been going after targets and missing the goal completely, right? Just trying about thinking about shooting a stick to hit a rock. And then I would hit the rock and then I would feel still lost because I did not even enjoy the process of shooting the twig, right? Those obsessed with glory attach their well-being to the regard of others. Those who love pleasure tie it to feelings, but the one with true understanding seeks it only in their own actions. That's a quote by Marcus Aurelius, right? It's the same concept. I had been chasing goals and knocking them off for the feeling that I thought they would give me, right? So I dug down to why, right? If you wanna try this, say, what's your goal? Why is that your goal? I want a million dollars, why? I want a brand new house, why? I want a Lamborghini, why? And what I found was that a lot of my goals were attached to praise and validation. So I was never knocking off goals to be who I wanted to be. I was knocking off goals to shape what I wanted other people to think of me. And in Think Like a Monk, there's a quote, um, I think it's, I am who I think you think I am, right? Which is not true. I am who I think I am. So who do you wanna be? So this is the question that changed my entire life. So what I did is I listed out all my targets, my entire life 
targets. Right? I want to travel. I want to learn five languages. I want to make a million positive paradigm shifts in the world. I want to help thousands of people reach financial freedom. All these things. And then I ask myself, who do I need to be to achieve these things? Right? Who, I need, who do I need to be? Who do I need to be for every single goal? And when it came down to, you know, to the bare bones of it, it was a simple answer. I think it's something we can all try and strive to do. And it's the person I need to be is the best version of myself. I need to be someone that lives up to my full and true potential. And that's something we can all, that's not just something, that's the only thing we can all strive for. So I wanna be the person that lives up to his full potential and then let go of the results, right? Let go of the results. So I let go of my targets and I only focus on the day-to-day -day things that will allow me to live up to my true potential because you can control that. You can control being the best version of yourself, but you can't control the results that come from that. So I let those go and I focus on the road ahead. So what is that road? That road is your guiding principles. So what I did was I asked myself, the best version of myself, that guy, that guy I see in my head, what are the values that are guiding him? What are the values that he's living by? So I came up with these values that I said, if I can do this every single day, I will live up to my true potential. I will be living the best version of myself. And those values are authenticity, discipline, consistency, and generosity. So it became really easy for me and a lot more rewarding because instead of thinking, come on, you gotta do this now so you can hit this target in the future. You gotta do this so you can make 100 million. You gotta do this so you can million subscribers, whatever it is. It became a lot simpler because first of all, I'm no longer putting off my joy, my happiness to this target, right? Because you build up this target of like, I wanna make a million bucks. And then you work, 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 work for years and you hit a million bucks and yeah, I can finally be happy, but then you're not. So you, all this time you're pushing off your happiness so that you can make a million bucks and you made a million bucks and then it sucked. So instead, every day when you're asking yourself, am I being authentic today? Was I consistent today? Right, yes. Was I disciplined today? Yes. Was I generous today? Yes goals have been achieved, I can go to bed, it doesn't matter what happened. It could have been the worst day of my entire life, but if I stuck to those four values, four principles, I'm living up to my true potential and that's the best I could do and I can release the results because the results don't matter because what matters was that I stuck to my core values and that I stuck to being who I wanted to be. So what I did was I made a mission board and this is a whole nother topic for a whole nother video I could talk about, but I made a mission board, which I think is a lot better than a vision board because vision boards are focused on what? Vision boards are focused on targets. And that's anyway, so that's another story, but I made a mission board and what my mission board is, is basically a mantra where I have my four columns, right? I have authenticity, authentic, uh, consistency, discipline, and generosity. And in those columns, I have what is it that I have to do to stay on this mission, right? What is it? within authenticity that I'm doing every day to stay on track, on my path. So one thing is I released all my attachment to material items for external validation. Right, so for one example, I have a bunch of, I had a bunch of designer clothing um, and it, I realized how toxic that was. I didn't wear designer clothing because I thought it was the coolest looking clothes in the world. I did it for external validation. It was just super toxic and it wasn't authentic. It was not truly authentically me. It was a version of myself that I thought was cooler than my true self. So I packed all that crap up, put it in a box and I got rid of it. So that's all gone. So that's a part of authenticity. There's like a bunch of other ones, but um, that's, I'll just share one. Next is consistency. So what I started doing was I started tracking my time. Now that was one of the hardest things for me, for any of you that are, you know, like your own boss, your entrepreneur, you're self-employed, you're working from home, I did it to gain freedom. And I thought that if I started tracking my own hours, that defeated the purpose. But really, it didn't. It was the it was the most freeing thing because now I have something to compare against on a daily basis. Something to keep me accountable on a daily basis. So I started tracking my time. Um, that's part of my consistency mission, right? Then there's discipline. So I created a daily routine that I stick to every single day. It's a four hour morning routine and a two hour nighttime routine. And I know that might sound crazy, but I started at five minutes. I started at five minutes every morning doing a gratitude meditation. And then I added to that and I added to that and I added to that. And I built it up to being this routine that keeps me, it really anchors me, right? It doesn't matter what I have planned for the day. It doesn't matter what's going on. I, if, as long as I do this morning routine, you know, that's, I've stuck to my discipline and it's something I stick to every day and so that's part of my discipline mission. And the next is generosity. Now generosity, 
as a big one for me. And it's one that really was a big paradigm shift for me. And it started when I read The Go-Giver. So if you've never read The Go-Giver, absolutely must, must read actually, or listen to uh, on Audible. Great, great book, great story. And it's a great concept about not being a go-getter, but being a go-giver. People that give um, are the ones who are truly magnetic, right? The ones who are truly influential are the givers. And I read this book, it's like a, it's a fiction book. He tells it as a story and I thought the concept was really cool. But what really hit home with me was when I continued to read other books. When I, when I read Arnold Schwarzenegger's Total Recall, when I read What It Takes by Stephen A. Schwartzman of Blackstone, when I read Shoe Dog, The Nike Story by Phil Knight, when I read um, Authentic, um, The Story of the Vans Shoe Company, all of them, one, all these successful, super successful people, the one thing I picked out from every single one of their stories that stayed the same was their generosity, their inclination to be givers. Um, and that's something I personally, honestly, was not very great at. It's always either you're helping me get a, achieve something or you're not gonna be part of my life. It's a mission. You're, I'm getting to the top of the, the mountain and if you're in my way, get out of my way and it's for myself. So adding generosity to my true potential um, was one of the things that really changed my perspective and it's actually something that comes into play into the final question is if I can do all this stuff, when I do all this stuff, when can I be truly happy then? <laughs> and this one, and I'm going to, I haven't figured it out. This is all a journey for me. Again, this has been three months, um, a three month awakening for me. But what I found out about happiness is that it can't be attained. It can't be caught. It can't be chased. Um, and I was on a, I was on a phone call with my, my business partner, his dad, we were talking to his dad. He's a very religious guy, um, very by the book. And we were talking about happiness and he says, why, why do you deserve to be happy? Why not just focus on making other people happy? And then when he, when he first said that, I kind of laughed. I was like, that's crazy. That's ridiculous. But then I was again, reading things like a monk in the, um, the ashram where they study monkhood. They say the same kind of similar thing. And I started studying other religions and I kind of found the same theme is that you can't really chase happiness. He tells a story in the book about a, a musk deer. It's a story of a deer that smelled this amazing scent and it spends its whole life chasing this amazing scent, but he never finds the scent because he doesn't realize the scent is coming from himself. It's, it's the scent of the deer and he's chasing it, but it's coming from within and that's what happiness is like. And I like to think of it like light. You can't capture light. No matter how hard you try to capture light in a bottle, you can't capture it, it will escape. It's like happiness, you can't capture it. It comes and it goes. The true secret is not to capture light, it's to do something that fulfills you enough that you're okay and comfortable being in the darkness. And that's kind of what I've learned through Think Like a Monk and through you know, studying different religions that most people that find fulfillment find it from serving others, right? From giving, and again, it brought me back to the go-giver. I'm like, everything is, kind of echoing the same message is how can you serve others, right? It's about giving, it's about serving. And that is something that I think I was always been missing in my targets, in my, you know, in my pursuit of happiness. So I've been rambling and I apologize for that, but this is a very important video for me because this has been a step that I've been planning into my true authenticity, into really kind of just being and not acting and not trying to, you know, put on a front to you guys because this is the kind of stuff I would really enjoy to talk about. It's the kind of stuff that I would love to upload and publish on this channel, but I always thought it wasn't the right place or it wasn't the right audience and it wouldn't get any views, right? But it's not about the views. It's not about the targets. It's not about the numbers. It's about living up to my true potential. And I think sharing what I really enjoy and what I'm really passionate about is something that I would like to do because what I learned, again, is not what's the target. It's who do you want to be? What do you have to do to be that person and who are you serving in the process? And in doing that, I think you can find fulfillment and joy will come from that, but I don't think you can actually find happiness. But that's how I turned my life around and went from a life of just kind of money and greed and hatred, resentment, resentment for myself, for the person I became, because it was not the person I thought I would, it's not how I thought I would feel when I was 18 and I was dreaming of all these goals. I had a lot of resentment and in kind of going through this journey and going through this self-exploration, I found that um, 
found the answers for myself that kind of helped me. Now it's not the answers, it's just what's helped me um, get through that place in my life and now I'm feeling really good. <laughs> so hopefully this kind of helps you, any of you guys that are kind of out there that are, you know, that were kind of in the same sp situation or came same spot, feeling lost, feeling like you don't have a purpose or you don't have any, anywhere to go, any mission in life. Um, yeah, that was for you. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. Hopefully uh, you'll enjoy more videos like this because I will plan and I do promise I will be uploading more of these. So if that's something you want to see, um, click my face, subscribe. I'm JT Franco and I'll see you guys later.